Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome back to another Improving Australian Football episode with Melbourne Victory. But before we get into it, just want to give you an update of what I actually did today. If you followed me on Twitter, you would have seen that I did actually play Pez 2016 today with a couple other YouTubers from Australia, from Melbourne as well, where I'm from. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Maybe some content coming over the next couple days. So you can see, yeah, how it plays and everything like that. Uh, obviously, it's good, but I'll talk about that more in that video. But yeah, it's probably even put me in a good mindset to continue with YouTube and just, yeah, push on and keep going, you know, even more than I was already. I wasn't planning on stopping or anything saying that. But yeah, just, yeah, kind of... Uh, getting to know other YouTubers even more so, talking with them about YouTube and just football in general, it got me in a good mindset to continue just, yeah, push on motivation and everything like that all together. So, yeah, for this series at least, up until Fever 16, um, I'm not sure how much of a improving Australian football series it will be, like how far I'll get, uh, but it can be more of a just a Melbourne victory save more than anything. Hopefully, I'll win the league. Obviously, get in Champions League, Asian Champions League, and yeah, do what do what I can with that, and we'll see how it goes. You don't know, so yeah, I just I want to focus on that right now. I don't want it to become one of those things again where people just say like. Uh, yeah, you're not going to get to where your goals. I just want to simply enjoy a, a football manager save, you know, until Fever 16 rocks up and then I'm going to have some good content. So, yeah, hopefully you guys see it that way just as a fun series to play more than anything uh, with the team I support. <laughs> yeah, as simple as that because, like I said, I'm in a really good mind frame. So, it's great to do a series like this now where I play the team, manage the team I support and it's it should be a really fun series, you know. My commentary should be interesting and, yeah, you should enjoy it. So hopefully that is the case. But uh, we have some kind of fitness problems, injury problems, illegible problems. So I wouldn't say they're problems because they already played uh, a youth game in the youth squad. So I can understand that Rashid Mahazi and Jesse Macarunas, uh, Archie Thompson injured though, Carl Valeri, Scott Galloway, all players that could be part of the first team. Uh, but we should be able to still get the job done. It's it's Brisbane Raw though. I I rate Brisbane Raw, and yes, it is in the game like this. I talked about in a previous episode how there's two stadiums. There's Dockland Stadium. I talk about that as Etihad Stadium. That's what it's called as well in real life. It's like the same name as the Man City uh, Stadium, but yeah, just it's a different stadium, just same name. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Docklands, and the other one was Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I rate that stadium more, um, Docklands, it's it's amazing really, uh, great stadium Etihad, but anyway, yeah, yeah, that's in the game as well, like they talk about two different stadiums we play at, which is pretty cool, uh, change it up, and yeah, like I said, I actually prefer this one more, so we'll see how we do, yeah, if you notice, the pitches may be different, so yeah, um, I'm just looking at the team right now. Any weak links? Uh, maybe uh, Fahid Ben Kalfala. He is not performing the way I would like him to, but you can't have all your players scoring so many goals, you know, like we have Gui Finkler really stepping up and Connor Payne and some midfielders doing really well. Broxham not scoring, but playing well in his role. Milligan st uh, stepping up with a few goals. Uh, Thompson before he got injured. So, yeah, goals coming from a lot of different avenues right now. So, yeah, we'll go into the game. And yeah, again, I'd like to see what you like about this series so far. Um, again, that's the thing. Obviously, if you'd want to see this advance a lot more, you say play a lot off camera. But yeah, that won't have the same enjoyment for me and the same connection with the series. Uh, like that's what I mean for you to get my enjoyment of playing this. If I play for a couple seasons, uh, win the league and then see how we go in Asian Champions League, it will be a nice little series to do up until FIFA 16. So um, yeah, hopefully yeah, that will be the case. And Brisbane, they have a very interesting lineup here. Brandon Borello, I really rate this guy in real life. I think in FM 16, he'll have a boost in his rating and potential. He scores a lot of goals. Uh, very good striker, can play wide as well. Um, looks like a likely top, but I think those two together, I'm not sure if they'll yeah, perform well. I guess we're going to find out here. And this guy is the best player in the A-League, in my opinion, Thomas Broich. Uh, he joined a few years back uh, from Nuremberg uh, in the Bundesliga. He was playing for FC Köln as well. So he was a Bundesliga footballer. 
So you can't doubt that ability, his quality, and you just have to watch him play. He's 33 now, but he's still got that class. He's still a classy guy. Um, even around that time before he joined Brisbane, he actually thought about giving up football, you know, because in the Bundesliga, obviously he was not really a first-teamer. He was still playing games, but obviously maybe off the bench, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that was very interesting because uh, when he came to the A-League, he was probably, yeah, he's the best. he's been the best player, uh, kind of, in my opinion anyway. I'd love him at Melbourne Victory, even though he was getting a bit older. I would have loved if Victory signed him when Brisbane signed him. Would have been amazing. And yeah, Bessart Barisha was there at the same time, just so you can get a feel. And yeah, they were, th their partnership together was absolutely amazing. But yeah, it's time to get into the games now, uh, where I go out there, enjoy yourselves tonight. Just have a bit of fun at home here. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, Leia. He's listening nervously. I guess he hasn't played too much. So again, we'll go assertive. So have faith in you. Boost that. He's happy now. It's funny how just with a talk, that can change. The first reaction is bad. And the next one turned around. Assertive. I have faith in you for Barisha. Looks happy. See, for me, Beshart Barisha, he's a guy that will be smashing in a lot of goals in the season. I would say 20 plus, but because there's less games than like a Premier League season, for example. Uh, yeah, 15 plus is an excellent season in the A-League, in the league uh, games anyway, 27 league games, play each team three times. So again, seasons are shorter. So I should get through it quicker. And here we go, Ben Kalfala, Finkler. What is he going to create here, Finkler? Goes back to Milligan. Milligan, ooh, that was poor Milligan. Oh, you got to do better there because they could be on for a counter. Henrique is a very good player as well, Brazilian winger, can play up front as well, can score goals. He's good from the spot as well. But Petratos... Ooh, I originally thought that looked like a bad shot, but end up, yeah, coming off the bar. Uh, Dalpierre defends it really well. So I think Dalpierre should be able to contain those types. I'm not sure about Leia, though. But here's Enrique. Oh, come on, defend it. I have a feeling we're going to concede. But maybe before it... Maybe just... it's. I don't know if it feels too early to do a team talk. Just say concentrate. I feel they're lacking concentration at the minute. We'll see... So we look kind of pain just running like that. It's an interesting game. Interesting game uh, because we're dominating possession, of course, like usual. And Finkler puts it in. Leia. Dalpierre was that. Is it a Dalpierre goal? It is a Matthew Dalpierre for his second goal of the season. A very nice finish from close range. You see Finkler putting it in there. Leia won the first header. <laughs> They're the two center backs combining. Uh, which happens sometimes, you can notice from corners, not too regularly or anything, but yeah, it's pretty good when they can combine, like they're in good positions. That's why I put one in that position, uh, kind of far post or something, and one guy yeah, charging in, uh, kind of that mid area around there, making a run into the box. Enrique smashes in a free kick. I told you he was good. I'll just pause. He's got fifth goal of season. So yeah, he's a decent player. You can see he's got a lot of flair. Work rate's really good as well. He's 31, so he's kind of lost his pace, but he's still got his technical ability. Great Brazilian player as well. Obviously, never played for Brazil. He's not yet. Yeah, that's why he's in the A-League. But yeah, he's quality. There's like heaps of Brazilian players that are uh, quality footballers, you know, because it's probably, yeah, the main sport they play and it's just got bundles of talent, a lot of their players. Uh, a lot don't have the mental attributes to make it at the really top level, like someone like a Neymar who's made it that high. But yeah, like... There's so many talented Brazilian footballers in the world. Uh, just going by talent alone. Uh, footballing ability, technical ability, dribbling ability. And hmm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with how this first half is going. You've got to fire them up. Because don't forget, we'll go home. And yeah, the last game we came a draw as well. But this being at home, I like Brisbane's team. You know, their midfield's really strong. I've got Matt Mackay as well, who's... An Australian international play again, work rate high, 20. So that's an amazing midfield they have. Uh, Lustica is not terrible as well. He's got, again, natural fitness. Anywhere else, he's probably not absolutely amazing. And then you've got Broish out wide on the left. Uh, Enrique on the right. So it's a really good mix. And I actually like Jerome Poland at right back. Uh, he looks like a good defender. Uh, for this level, at least, as a fullback, he's pretty good. So, yeah, this isn't going to be an easy game. We're going to have to get our play going. We have got more possession, but uh, we're not uh, we're not absolutely at our best in this game, I can notice. We'll see Ben Kalfala, what he can do. Matt Mackay again, see? That work rate. 
that determination to win the ball back, but then he gave the ball straight back to us. Uh, Chris Griffiths Jones hands Mark Milligan a yellow card there. Uh, Barisha, I think he came up with a knock there, an offside at the same time. Not a good mixture. Maybe we can go for a chance here. We'll see. Mark Milligan. Come on, create something, Barisha. Barisha, play it through. Finkler. Oh, you know he's been lacking that, his finishing ability. And that's where Football Manager is really realistic. Finkler, that's what lets him down in real life. He's an amazing creative player, but sometimes he, well, he kind of doesn't take too many chances. Maybe that's why he can't finish. <laughs> he doesn't take too many chances, but yeah, he'd rather just create it. So, mm, we've got to make a change, but a lot of low conditions. Barisha, I don't want to take him off because who do we have to bring on? Uh, Naboo. Uh, like, uh, we need someone that can be a spark. Uh, is probably the best option, Costa Barbarousas, for Ben Kalfala. We got to, It's more about personnel here for me. The players that can make a difference. A lot of yellow cards as well. Hmm, Daniel Georgievsky to come on, maybe. Like attacking fullback, maybe he can come on for some spark for Jason Guerrier, who's probably more a defensive type because he's like a natural centre-back. And we'll make those changes. I've got to leave Barisha on because if we have a golden chance, Barisha will finish it. And you bring on Nabu, who's not the same quality, same experience as Bessart Barisha, may not take it. So it's those things down together. And also, we'll probably move to attacking now as well. And maybe change some to instructions. We'll go higher tempo, more direct passing, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and run at defense. If if we score, I might add run at the defense specifically in the tactic. I'll just see because we've got a lot of those types of players, especially when you bring on someone of the like of Barbarousas with his pace. So it makes sense. Now, Henrique puts it in. Oh, Co, he saves us here. Like, if we had an average goalkeeper, like, I don't think we would be doing as well as we are. Like, maybe in the last game against Sydney, maybe we could concede another goal as well and lost. But, yeah, home. This is this is not the way I want to be playing at home. So, Barisha probably has to finally come off low condition. Maybe Andrew Naboo. Uh, what can he do coming on? He's got determination. He lacks pace, though. That's his problem. He's a decent finisher at this level with his potential. His potential to be, yeah, a star in the A-League. So, show it. He's an expert. He could be a super sub. He was a couple years ago. Can he be now? That's what we need. Naboo, show us your magic, man. You've done this before. A oh, huge occasion as well to do this. Uh, team talk as well. We'll go passionately and we'll just say, oh, demand more. Demand more. Don't want to say push forward. I'm not sure if push forward affects with the tactic at all. Do you know if it does? Not sure, because, yeah, it's like saying getting men forward, but I can't see something happening in this game. We could go very late, but I'm not sure if it's too late. Like, go route one and pump the ball into the box, all that kind of stuff. Push higher up, be more expressive. Is it too late for that? Is it too late? Uh, so what are we going to do here? Um, we'll go overload as well, but I have a feeling it'll be maybe a bit too late. Uh, there could be a chance, but... Also, it could be no chance at all. It could be just a highlight at the end of the game. We, Yeah, I think it's going to be that. I don't feel like there's going to be a chance. And especially going back to Co here. Hmm, it's especially having yeah 58% possession. This is one of these games where we do have the possession, but it's not, yeah, not enough to be dominating the match in terms of deserving to win. We didn't. We didn't create good enough chances. So, yeah, this may go down. Uh, we've got to think about this a bit more now. Like, two games in a row. Ah, uh, Mark Milligan lost confidence. I'll just say I'm not happy. Like, I'm not going to say I'm pleased with a 6.8 rating. I'm not going to lie to the players. Of course, yeah, Brisbane, the next best team in the league. So I can understand that if we didn't dominate against them. But we are expected to win the league. You go to us, uh, you go to general uh, you see where media prediction is first. Uh, we're the most supported team in the league as well. Uh, decent funds, but again, salary cap takes that away. Having the most money doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, selling the most tickets, most memberships, uh, yeah, can only mean so much. But again, Finkler was the man of the match or player of the match, but he didn't score. He had a chance, but he didn't take it. But he was excellent still. See, look what he did in the game. You look, 14 key passes. 
That's insane, and that's not like long throw-ins like AC Milan say with uh, Goulam. That that's not it. He's he's just amazing creative player, and he deserved that rating most definitely. But apart from that, our other players didn't step up. You can't just have one good player in the game. You're not going to win that way. So guys, I will make a couple of tactic alterations here. In terms of team instructions, of course, we've started great to the season. But last two games, I noticed, yeah, uh, we're dropping a little bit. So I'm going to add a couple things. I want to go higher tempo with Melbourne victory. And, yeah, that's the way I want to play a more, yeah, up-tempo um, kind of stuff. Uh, run defense as well, adding that. And considering we got exploit the flanks, we'll do play wider. Just a couple of changes. That's what we've got to alter. Of course, I kind of wanted to go with the same kind of lineup uh, with AC Milan as it been a great success. But you can't have the same tactic with each team, most definitely. But of course, this suits our team, of course. A 4-2-3-1. That suits the, the setup. The formation suits it. But you've got to change team instructions for the tactic as a whole. And even mentality. I'll keep it standard for now because it's a good judgment. Then you may go more defensive, more attacking during the game. Uh, but yeah, it's good to make adjustments. And then hopefully I can get to a point where with Melbourne victory, I get the tactic perfect, suiting the players, suiting the league, uh, suiting the opponents we play. That's bound to happen uh, with just some alterations and testing. It's time to move into the next game here against Adelaide United. We're back. We're playing Adelaide United again. We did at the start of the season. We won 4-0 against them. Uh, we did actually lose against them at the very, very start of the season in the FFA Cup uh, before the friendlies, which is crazy. Uh, but, yeah, we turned that around. But, and you reckon at home, we should absolutely kill them if we could yeah, win 4-0 away from home. But... Yeah, last two games haven't been the best. So I, I knew I don't have to make so many major changes because we've started amazingly to the season as a whole. So I just made some little changes, little tweaks, like I said, which you may have to do. And then, yeah, you look to improve from there. But we've had a very good season so far, at least. And we are approaching the end of November. So already almost in December, approaching January. So yeah, these seasons in the A-League are very quick. Uh, so yeah, I could probably get a few seasons through, <laughs> uh, most definitely, but yeah, in the future, if you would like to, oh, I didn't show you the lineup. I'll show you anyway, uh, as I did set up, uh, any new players coming in that, yeah, I brought Nicholas Ansel back into the lineup, Georgievsky, just a bit stronger, you know, Ansel instead of Leia and Georgievsky instead of Jason Guerrier, just yeah, a bit more, uh, a bit more strength in there, and also uh, Scott Galloway coming onto the bench. Hopefully, he can yeah stick through now because he's been playing some under-20 games, and he's got high potential, potential to be a star. He's a guy coming through, can play left-back and right-back. So, yeah, important player for us. Uh, so, we'll go in opposition instructions. That's something, um, like, in the first, like, four games or so, four, four, four or five games, he absolutely dominated, but maybe it's something I've got to think about. Like Marcelo Kluska, who's an absolutely amazing player, who can't give him space. So maybe we'll close him down a lot and tight mark. And yeah, that's what. What does he have a weak foot? Oh well, yeah, left only. So in that kind of occasion, yeah, it's you might as well work on that. But when a player is good on both feet, yeah, you don't want to waste that kind of extra effort. It will be wasted because they're just a superstar anyway. Uh, but yeah, when a player is like that, yeah, you try and yeah force them onto a weaker foot. So we're, we say we're favourites here. And ooh, again, we got to go to bump up their reactions. We got nervous in defence by one player and we turn that around once again. But hopefully it makes an impact in the result. We say I have faith in you and look at those amazing reactions updating. And for the strikers, I have faith in you, Bessar Barisha. Listen keenly. So yeah, we'll see if those uh, little adjustments uh, make effect. They've got some lower conditions. Even their goalkeeper, Eugene Galekovic, actually an ex-Melbourne victory player, he used to be a backup. That's why he wanted to leave. But Ben Cavallo puts it in. Ah, oh, come on. He should be close to match fitness as well, full match fitness. Uh, but also, Isaias in midfield, only 77% condition. I don't think he'll last uh, the whole 90 minutes. Or he, may, uh, he may end up getting injured. But Ben Cavallo, Ben Cavallo, Ben Cavallo, Ben Cavallo. That's what he can do. He's still got yeah, he's still got that pace uh, for a 32-year-old, I believe he is now. Uh, but again, that was a good start, but we've got to capitalize on the dominance. This is at home again. Two home games in a row. We can't go like two home games in a row without winning. So we've got to do it here, Payne. Milligan, Finkler, Barisha. 
Oh, Alcee. Oh, he's not even that good, Alcee. Just wait. We'll see what happens here. Finkler. Finkler. Oh, maybe no. Jordan Alcee, yeah? He's not that good. He's really weak. Um, strong. His strength is only 10 and jumping reach is only 10. His technicals aren't the best because he's still only a young player. He's got okay potential, though. Uh, Bogards, yeah, all right. Anyone else that's kind of a weakness in the team? Now nah, he's doing the real weakness, I'd say. But yeah, to have a weakness at centre back is really crucial, especially with our attacking prowess that we do have. Hmm. We'll see if we can make an impact. I see we're suggested to play more direct passing. We'll see. We'll see what from this chance what will happen, and maybe we'll adjust that once again. And here's Connor Payne. He's hugging the touchline. Look at that. Look at that. Now he's going to get a cross in, surely. Barisha. That's Bessart Barisha at his best. You give him a chance, and he'll take it. Even though it's only a 50-50 chance, Bessart Barisha will take it. But how about that wing play by Connor Payne? That was excellent. He was up against Alrich there. And Barisha, what a finish. Bessart Barisha. As the season goes on, you'll probably see more of that from him. Like his, I wouldn't say, like I'll say world class. He's He's class for the A-League. He's not that level player world class, but he seems that way playing in the A-League. Just a much better striker than most in the league. And the best. Any team would love him. He's the best in the league. And he showed that there with his finishing ability. Connor Payne shows how good he is out wide as well. He's going to be a great winger in the A-League. Uh, for us, he's only getting better. That's crazy, and he's showing he's one of the best this season, like, if not the best player as as a whole. Ah, uh, what are we gonna say here? Again, we'll, I'll say don't get complacent because we haven't been too amazing. Ben Kalfala, I'll just say you weren't that bad. I have faith in you. I don't know he's been. See, at this point, I'm not gonna offer him a contract because he takes one of those foreign spots, and he's gonna be 33 next season. Might drop in that pace a little bit. But more importantly, he's not showing signs. Those foreign players, they have to be stars. They have to be stars in your team. You look at the others. There's Dalpierre, who's a great centre-back. Yeah, he's worthy of it. Um, we don't have too many. Yeah, we've got Gu Finkler as well. He's been here for yeah, a few seasons now. How long till he'll get the citizenship for Australia? Um, uh, yeah, he's still, he's still uh, got a while to go, you know, but... Uh, probably a season and a bit status is that 571 days because that's days completed that's how many days he needs so yeah that many days left so over a year though almost two years but yeah we've got to look to do that and Bessa Brish yeah that's what I was going to say he's been here for ages yeah he's going to be close by next season uh, at some point he should be able to take the Australian citizenship and he won't be classed as a, a foreign player anymore, which would be which would be good. And he's only 29. It's not like, yeah, maybe he's like getting 31, 32, where you may not want to uh, like renew his contract. But he's got a contract till 2016 at the same time. So yeah, within a couple of seasons, he's going to be off that foreign player uh, kind of list. And we'll have another spot available, so it's important to keep him on, especially as he is one of the best strikers in the league. That's so he's going to hold that. He's always going to be a decent player in this league for a while now. Now it's Broxham. Come on, <laughs> penalty! I'm looking for there. Sirio, Pablo Santos, Georgievski. Uh, good defending there, Georgievski. Uh, Georgievski isn't a foreign player because he is technically Australian, but plays. Um, someone yeah, said it was wrong. Uh, I just clicked on yeah um, F F Y R Macedonia. Someone said it was wrong calling him Macedonia. That's what they're called. I'm just reading what they're called in the game. So apologies. Uh, there may be something something there, but um, yeah, I'm just I'm just reading what they're called in the game. So yeah, don't bite my head off just because of that. As Ben Kofala puts it in. Oh, come on, Georgeski. But yeah, Georgeski. The point is. He was born in Australia. Now, it's Isaias. He's still going. What's his... Yeah, he's down to 61%. Is it worth hard tackling him now? I would say so. I would say so. So, where do we go? Opposition. And Isaias. Where are we? We'll tackle him hard. There's a good chance he'll get injured. But, oh well. <laughs> Sub him off, Adelaide. He's not even having a great game. And you need to get something. So, it hasn't been as dominant... Like, we beat them 4-0 away from home. So, even if we win, but not as huge, maybe it's still a concern. Uh, you don't 
You don't know. And they've got all this space out wide. Sergio Sirio. Sergio Sirio. Oh. Nathan Coe saves us once again. I told, like He's a good goalkeeper for this level. We definitely would have conceded more. Like, you look at their goalkeeper, Eugene Galekovic. He's still eh, got some decent attributes. But Coe, he's got really beastly ones. Look, he's got a 16, even though it's only tendency to punch. Um, but the important attributes. And he's improving. He's doing well in training, so he's only getting better as a player at the minute. So, yeah, he's he's a good goalkeeper. Oh, Brad Smith's injured. That's huge. That is huge for us. Don't want to be a huge injury, but the thing is, Scott Galloway can come on now, who's definitely good enough. Uh, he He's right-footed, but his left foot is fairly strong, so he can come on the left side. He can do okay. So I, I wouldn't want Brad Smith to be injured for too long. He's been good. Training been a bit up and down, but... Played first game for the national team. He'll come along and he'll be a good player. But mm, maybe attacking change. No, attack's gone all right. Nah. Ben Kalfala is... Oh, he's a tricky one. He's a tricky one. We're going to bring on Andrew Naboo out wide. And we'll see how he goes in that role. You think, yeah, Costa Barbarus is probably a better player in that role as well. Better player in general and more suited to that role. But, yeah, we'll see how Naboo goes. He lacks pace. So that could be a problem. But sometimes, yeah... You think a player lacks pace and out wide he won't do well, but he comes up and does well for you, just the way it goes. And Karuska ended up going off. So we did well with opposition instructions for Karuska. Uh, he didn't end up having an impact, so I was happy with that. And now Finkler finds pain. Could this be another chance? Broxham. Come on, Broxham finds Finkler. Can he create another goal? Ooh, they clear it up. Who have we got the main striker? Yeah, Palanka. I don't think he's that good. Should deal with it. Galloway goes back to Co. See, so composed at the back. Uh, it would be great to pick up a clean sheet here for Co. And just the defense in general. Here we go. Barisha finds Naboo. What did I say? Barisha! He scores! Come on! He's starting to hit his straps now. A great time in the season. Uh, to do so because at the start of the season we got results without him smashing in goals and now like seven seven eight games in if he starts on a run a few games or like a month or so of smashing in goals uh yeah we'll go a long way to winning the title but also like i said in australia the main thing uh, is to win the grand final like in the playoff kind of parts and you win that that's kind of being known as the champions just so you know if you don't have the feel of it how the A-League kind of works. And it's a lot of sports in Australia like that as well. Uh, that, yeah, the final series is uh, the main winner, you know. Not just who ends up on the top of the table at the end of the season. That's great, but it's not the major thing. And Barisha now, Finkler. Look at this. Finkler. Naboo. Naboo. Naboo finds pain. Pain. Oh. He couldn't find the back of the net to probably finish it off for sure. We'll make one more change, and that'll be Finkler just to come off. Wouldn't want him to pick up it in. No, actually, I'll leave him on. I'll take off Milligan. He's so crucial. And we'll bring on Carl Valeri, who probably needs some match fitness now. Been out for a couple. I think he had an injury, didn't he? So, yeah, that's why he was out. I didn't just leave him out. <laughs> but yeah, he was um, not available for selection. So, we just make that change. It says it was a tactical change. Well, it wasn't forced by injury, most definitely, but just player by player, not really changing tactics specifically. Come on, finish it. Barisha again! He does! No, he's offside. I thought that was a goal. Oh, that would have been amazing to get a hat-trick. And, yeah, score all goals in this game. Let's see how close it was, though. Yeah, he did just stray offside. Number three for them was good defending. Yeah, Bogard. Yeah, Nigel Bogard is an experienced A-League defender, so he did well there. Come on, keep this clean sheet here in Berisha. Uh, he does well. You know I do have one of my strikers to, yeah, get back there and defend because usually they'll be a taller, stronger type just playing, yeah, the one guy up front. I like them be, not target man specifically, but to at least be a physical presence, not just some, like, small guy. But, yeah, Beshart Berisha, this is what he does. This was a, a natural Berisha game from him what you would come to expect to win games for you to be the main goal scorer and he did that today and hopefully we'll see more of that because it'll make us a better team more dangerous team for him to be yeah smashing in goals and he's starting to now we'll see what brisbane do in their next game but right now we're six points ahead of them and massive goal difference so guys i shall leave this here for now 
was a decent episode. Uh, couldn't beat Brisbane Raw, who's been the next best team in the league this season. So it's understandable. It was good to avoid defeat. I'd like to go unbeaten once again, um, like my <laughs> AC Milan save. Um, but yeah, I want to really do well with Melbourne victory, as I've already kind of explained. And if you notice, my commentary is a bit softer uh, in this episode. It is because I am recording at night. Like I said, um, I was busy today uh, playing some pairs. was out all day, so I came home to do like a commentary a bit later today. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the video and like I said everything about it I'm really excited where I'm, I'm going to take my channel from from here on out It was a perfect time to do what I did with Pez yeah, 2016 meeting some other guys who do the same kind of stuff Yeah, making videos and everything like that. It puts me in a good mindset and um, Yeah, kind of getting feedback from those guys. It's something you take on more than anyone else, you know So yeah, it's, it puts me in a great mindset going into Fever 16 Which Fever 16 is going to be so crucial for me. I know I probably talk about it a lot. Sorry if yeah, you don't like it, but it's like, it's something that I'm focusing on a lot and it's basically going to decide if I'm going to do YouTube full time, if it, it's a hit for me, like it usually is. Uh, that's when I get my most subscribers. So um, yeah, getting to 100k is crucial for me because then when you get to that stage, it's like a downhill slope. You start growing much more, you get talked about more, your channel gets noticed on YouTube more. Uh, most YouTubers above 100k get that verified tick and just all those things together will uh, yeah make me to be able to do YouTube more professionally. So hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys next time.